Hello folks, it's Tufty Indigo here, and this week I'm trying something new to the channel. I am casting Forged Alliance. Today I have an exciting 3v3 replay for you with some 1500 rated players, one of whom is Carl who suggested this on the Forged Alliance Forever Discord. So let's jump straight into the operational area and see how it goes. You join us today on a Neuroxis map, which is, um, well, I'm not going to say what the shape looks like, but you can use your, <laughs> uh, what the, uh, the chat has already provided. Thank you very much. Uh, the player who I'm just going to call do, cause I'm not going to try and read that whole thing out. Um, they're playing as UAF in the North, uh, also on the North side, we've got Laxalta and Carl. And uh, this is a, a UEF and Sarah um, coalition on the south side. We have Mambo, who has gone first uh, um, in orange here. And Raider in red at the back, uh, who's the Eon player on their team. And uh, Zeratu. Uh, so yeah, one first air player. That's uh, a very interesting choice here. So let's see, he's he's also decided to rush the hydrocarbon, which seems a good choice as it's so close. And definitely going to need that power if you're going first air. Um, suggestion also that the map looks like a plane. Um, uh, maybe, with, with very short wings. Uh, Raider here says, I take back and rush t T3 air. Uh, we've also got their uh, hydrocarbon plants up quickly. I, I assume all of the players have. Yep. Uh, a very interesting formation of power going on here. Uh, some good reclaim going out there. And also Zeratu uh, coming up to, uh, to build some navy. Uh, navy coming down here. Also for Carl in the Lavender. Uh, who also has uh, an engineer going to claim this bit. So yeah, this is one of those interesting Neuroxis maps where basically all of the players are, are in half of the map and half of the map is empty for expansion, but also has quite a lot of mass. Um, and I find these quite high pressure maps because um, there's, there's going to be one player. And I think in this case, it is uh, Carl and Mambo who's really got to try and cover as much of this empty ground as possible and get, get as much of that eco for the team. Um, while the other players, are, it's clear that they are trying to expand into a, a more confined area. Um, first scout coming out for Carl here. Uh, seems to be going the wrong way. Uh, just off mapping it. Yeah, trying to go around the outside of the map here. Um... And also first scout coming out from Mambo, but who's going to check this island in a more direct way, but who's also got a transport, uh, which wants to uh, unload one NG just on the other side of the um, the ravine here, so they can start proxy facking up, but then is also going to unload on here, uh, presumably subject to what that scout saw. The reason for the early uh, factory is revealed there. Um, I, but I think that has just been seen by that scout. The Inti is not going to make it there in time to stop the drop off here. But we'll see if maybe they get uh, an early gunship out to try and stop any expansion here. This NG going for the mass points first and then a factory. You'd think maybe with the, the drop having been scouted, they might go for anti-air first uh, to try and defend against a bomber coming in. Um, yeah, first T1 bomber coming out here for Carl. So it's really interesting that uh, you might think of these players as the front players. But really the, the land route here is is, uh, is broken by this ravine. And actually the, the land route is, is in the, the north here. Where if you've got amphibious or hover units, you can get across this gap. And I think that might turn out to be quite significant. Also, a drop now coming out for 
Uh, which blue is that? Uh, that is Lax Salter. Yeah, and they are also going to go for the island. Uh, is it an NG drop? Is it a Ghetto Gunship? Yeah, looks like an NG drop. Um, so maybe a bit ambitious. They might be. They might go in and immediately try and reclaim the orange NG, but uh, we'll see how that goes down in a moment. Um, early air engagement here, very much decided in favour of orange, but uh, it's still very early days. It's a small numbers of units. Uh, and they're also going to take this transport, stop it making any more runs. But yeah, four NGs on the ground here. Uh, they're building a pointy fence, I think. They will, uh, yeah. They really should be taking this factory. But I think they'll stop anything coming out of here. Oh yeah, factory's getting reclaimed. Uh, Mambo says, not handling my eco the best. Uh, so now they're trying to chase this uh, mobile artillery. This is going to be absorbing some APM here. That's possibly quite out of proportion for the, the value the RT would get. Uh, also, naval battles going on here. Uh, early uh, early submarines out of radar and living up to their name there. They're a, a massive threat to do's um, naval ambitions. Also, a frigate coming in. Try and uh, start attacking everything else that's vulnerable here, mainly the... Uh, the engineers. The submarines have been chased off for now, but they're going to be regrouped with allies. But really, the comm needs to be very careful here. If the submarines come back, could be uh, a bit of a, uh, a torping. But yeah, as Zeratu points out, uh, that all th three players are in Navy on the north side. Um, and oh yeah, then there's a whole extra shipyard facility going on here. Lots of naval factories. Um, whereas on the on the south side, there's only two players, and uh, they're only taking this area, nothing over here. Um, we'll see how that turns out for them. Um, there's a bit of a, a Alaska-Russia situation going on here across this strait, um, with the engineers kind of uh, staring at each other angrily, but uh, no no action going on yet, and. Uh, yeah, so Red has regrouped. Raider sending their units back in here. Frigates and subs. Still not a huge force, but... Um, yeah. Nope. They think better of it. They're heading back. Taking up a defensive position. Uh, is that a surface submarine there? No, it's not. It's uh, still underwater. Uh, more drops coming out. So this is quite a ballsy one from Raider. Definitely living up to their name here. And they're hoping to drop kind of in the back line. Do some mischief there. Um, just follow that. This uh, island in the south is contested once again as well. Uh, with bombers. So... Transport, uh, it's carrying artillery. Let's drop them off. It's going to take this mass extractor. No, it takes two shots to kill it. It takes two shots to kill it. Don't run away. It has been pung. Oh, there you go. Bomber's coming in. The, um, the artilleries have scattered. Um, but yeah, they're just taking out some T1 mixes, and uh, yeah, this one only got one hit on it. That was insufficient. So it uh, looks like two mixes. Um, yeah, still contested. This is, oddly enough, this island is now the, the main focus of fighting. There, there is not actually any fighting anywhere else. And it looks like Orange has enough mass here to take this. Uh, 
of us. One tank, but that's really uh, not going to achieve anything. And there's engineers up here to uh, to claim this territory and, and take the, the newly vacated mass points. Uh, Carl pinging T3. Oh yeah, so Raider, despite doing all the raiding, is also rushing to T3, T3 air. Which is, to be fair, what they told their allies they would do. Um, T3 NG's coming out, building T3 power. Um, and presumably there's going to be ASFs and Strat Bombers also coming out. Um, yup. So that's going to really change the complexion of the air game. Um, there's been a bit of a landing cushion over here with these tanks and uh, this base is actually looking very much in trouble. They don't really have anything to deal with this. But uh, yeah, they're trying to build up a point defense. I don't think it's going to finish in time though. It's, uh, it's already under fire. It's not even halfway up yet. However, they have managed to uh, to get some mantises here just to, to finish this off. Uh, and some uh, T-1 bomb bombers also picking off units there. So they've defended this. They've lost a lot. Like They've lost these mexes here. Um, they do have some reclaim in their base, which will help them get back on their feet. But uh, it's been quite a costly incursion there for Zeratu. Uh, they just had to pause their T-2 navy there while they can build up. Oh, yeah, they've also got gunships going on. Uh, gunship arriving a bit late there. Maybe he would gone off to, uh, to intercept some more units that were coming in. Um, a wing of interceptors arriving in the north, and it's going to find little resistance, but um, also not really going to do anything. It's uh, some basic scouting there. If we look at what they see, they take out that gunship basically for free, but what else are they going to do? Um, it's just some slightly weird scouting. However, if we go back onto Observer Cam, we can see the naval battle has now hotted up. And it's mainly submarines who are engaging in this. None of the T2 Navy is out yet. Um, and... Looking at the rate these frigates are going down, it looks like Carl's submarines are winning the day, but uh, Du is coming in to add to the chaos. Uh, Mambo has finally got a destroyer in. Destroyers are a, a bit more protected against the subs, and they should help against the frigates a lot. Um, but one destroyer doesn't really look like enough to, to fight this fleet. And uh, yeah, ASF's now out from Raider and Strat Bombers. Well, one Strat Bomber. Um, just sniping some, uh, some mass points. Very worthwhile there, but uh, it's, they're going to lose the, uh, the bomber for it. Two. Uh, a... Um, an ASF coming out of this air factory. Um, but if I look over here, there's um, only T2 air from Do so far. L Lux Salter uh, pinging possible TML. There is no TML there, but I don't know if, if they got hit by something that looked like it was coming from that area. I'm not sure what it would have been, but some scouting going out now to try and, uh, try and narrow that down. Um, there's a lot of T1 land over here not really doing very much. Um, I don't believe it can get down these cliffs, so I'm not sure whether they hope to send it from here or what they're defending against. Maybe another landing because there was a, a proxy fac in that area early on. But yeah, all of these, all of this T1 land roaming around is a uh, nice patrol, but not really doing very much. And we also 
Going back to the Navy, we see the Barracudas, those T2 submarines um, in the water now for Zeratu. And it really looks like Southside has made back some progress in the naval game, but not quite. They're, they're kind of scaring the, the Lavender Fleet back to base, but... Um, they, they don't really have enough to fight it yet, especially the cruiser here, which is, has been free to attack all of this area. Um, another, this looks like it must have been a drop because I've just seen the air transport landing there. So another drop here taking out all of these sensitive mexes. Um, if we look at the economy, um, not that much difference in it. 14 in favour of the hot colours in the south. So... The, the north, uh, that could even just be accounted for by this uh, this island here. Yeah, with the T2 Mexes here uh, now getting capped as well. That's that's enough for that difference. But it means that uh, really the north side does need to focus on raiding the eco here, here, and, and everything they've done here to, to stop south getting a lead from that. Um, ah, yeah, so Restorer's coming out here. Um very handy for defense especially against this t1 spam uh I, th I think it's really interesting how this game has gone they've gone for i mean it is a large map so that it, it makes sense that they would go for t3 air before t3 lands um but the there isn't even t2 land yet maybe some mexes um But really, this game is being fought in and over the water. Uh, the Lavender Fleet pushing into this corner again, possibly just to make sure there's nothing being built up here. Uh, shield boats also coming out for north side for do um given that the combat is mainly submarine combat so not sure if shield boats are the, the right answer there but maybe they're worried about possible restorers coming in uh, especially now that the the cruiser gameplay has changed uh maybe they haven't really adapted to the new changes and they feel like the shields are a good safety net there. Yeah, destroyers and subs pushing out now for Mambo. Um, they're just just trying to attrit the Lavender Fleet at the moment. Uh, I, I think they really don't want to engage it fully, but if they can pick off the, uh, the edge units, that's really good. And now that they're engaging the full fleets, they're, uh, they're falling back in a bit. Yeah, Lavender, um, Calder thinks that they're losing the Navy. I, I don't think it's quite that clear cut. They do need to tech up. Losing Navy will cost us the game, predicts Lex Salter. And it's easy to see how you might think that. This with the um, the interesting shaped lake here being the, the main no man's ground between the teams. Uh, there's uh, a few T1 bombers heading south here. Uh, they're just repositioning. They're not any attack yet, but the scouts going in ahead of them. So I think these could be given new orders. Perhaps Carl's still suspecting a TML in this area. Or they've spotted a comp. Is this going to be a T1 comp snipe? Like we've got up to T3 air, but we're going to go for a T1 comp snipe. They're getting attacked by the ASFs. ASFs all coming in now. They have not dropped, not a single bomb dropped on that comp. 
I think this might be uh, a time, a wake-up call, that uh, T1 bombers are not really worth much when there's so many ASFs and restorers on the field now. And these land units, even though it's just T1 spam, it's mostly RT, that there's a lot of stuff here that is not protected by any kind of ground defenses. The restorers are a big problem. Um, the comms just managed to put up uh, a T2 PD there. Uh, but they've just gone round it. And so they're able to take a lot of mexes. Uh, they could go for these if they head south a bit. A couple of factories, another T2 mex there. Um, however, if we look further north a bit, Carl, after... Uh, complaining that they were losing Navy. They've pushed out. They've actually evicted the South team from the water. And they are trying to bombard the ground bases there. However, the, uh, the terrain getting in the way. The FA ships shooting into terrain as they are known for. But there's some shots getting through. Uh, this mech's down to less than half and probably going to die. Yep. And it's going to be very dangerous for anything near the coastline, especially once these uh, tactical missile defenses die to the destroyer fire. The cruisers will have free reign to strike even deeper in. And uh, Raid are trying to build uh, Omni. Uh, Zeratu upgrading their Kant T3. They've got the restorers out to try and restore the naval balance a bit. Uh, they might try and resort to uh, torpedo bombers soon. I think they'll need to do something. Raider, uh, as the Aeon player, could maybe try some some floaty ships, uh, some floaty tanks to push because uh, the, the heavier ships with their higher DPS weapons are not always good against uh, large numbers of weak units. So the Aeon T1 hover spam can actually be really effective at getting Navy back. So they might try that, but at the moment they've got uh, they've got torpedo bombers and I think they're just trying to get the mass here so they can inflict some damage on that fleet before it's too late. Mambo here has put together some T1 spam to try and, well, to successfully counter the Lavender army that was coming in over here. Um, and they're trying to beat these ones as well. But, uh, yeah, Carl has moved in the Lavender Navy to, uh, to try and stop that and to try and blockade this, this land path here. Uh, really feel like he could be focusing the comm there. But yeah, this uh, you can tell that like these these T1 units here were not enough, and now Mambo's Com might be in trouble here. He's pushed forward. He's got no escorts left, and has quite a lot of T1 units around him. Uh, it's got quite a lot of regen on it though, so it will take a while. He's he's got plenty of time. I feel like, again, he should uh, try putting down a, T a PD maybe, but he'd have to stop moving for that, and that would hugely increase the damage he takes from these uh, mobile artilleries, which are, are not really being very effective at the moment. And, oh, more T1 bombers. They almost completely miss, but uh, Mambo's making it uh, away from the army with half health, dancing for his life. There's there's no uh, air superiority fighters in this area. What's going on? The air's just hugely in trouble, perhaps because uh, a lot of the air production's been refocused for bombers. But, oh, but the air's coming south here. Is it going to try and defend the calm? Just while we quickly look north, Zeratu still hugely in trouble from the North Navy, which uh, obviously production's ramped up there now that they feel, well, now that they have got control of the C, or the D, as we might call it. 
but uh, oh yeah, and going out with the torpedo bombers now, and with the restorers. I feel like that there's not enough torpedo bombers to make a real difference here. Just the mass of ships is way too much. Uh, I'm probably also going to lose the air fight now. Yeah. So they, they've they effectively turned their loss at sea into losing air as well, which is a big problem. Southside going to be very much on the back foot from now on. And especially as they've also lost this area of the map, they can't get these maxes back. And if we look at the the, uh, the eco difference now, it's it's gone up to about 200. There's more drops of land units coming in on this side. Um, starting with flak. Lots of flak here. I feel like more flak than they really need, given how uh, they just got trounced in the air over the cold color fleet. Though those restorers are still a threat. And there's more ASFs being built, so that maybe the flak will turn out to be worth its cost there. However, I completely missed over here. Zeratu's transported his ACU, uh, perhaps thinking that uh, his base was lost, he'd go for a base trade, um, has transported over very cheeky location here. Um, there's some T2PD, which should be able to deal with uh, the, the T1 units that are trying to evict them. Very risky play here. They've only, uh, and they've got T2 land here. And yeah, they're, they've really they've carved out some mass points. This is actually looking like a good play for them so far, but still very risky because it's his actual con there. If this uh, if this expansion or invasion um, gets into trouble, he's not going to be able to fall back. But then, if you look here, no, nowhere is safe for Zeratu. Everything is under huge bombardment. These the tactical missile defenses they're doing loads of work, but they're just not enough. And now that the, the land's drop has come in, it's just got nothing to defend against this. Um, uh, he's even paused all the, the land factories. Uh, I, yeah, Zorotu has just abandoned this area. But then it's all very well abandoning. But then what happens when these land units come down to Raider? Ra Raider's not been defending land on this side and is also under a bit of naval bombardment. There's more distance here, so they're relatively safer, but... Um, yeah, this, this blue streak here, there's nothing to stop it just walking all the way through here. And what are these NGs doing? They're just assisting air. Uh, like more restorers would help here, but also a, a line of T2 or T3 PD would go a long way into making what comes less painful for you. Uh, there's still drops going on here. There's still proxy factories on this side, uh, which are gradually coming. I don't know. Sorry, I'm, I thought that was the T2 indicator there, but no, this is all still T1 spam. Really could be T2 by this stage, you think? Um, but I feel like what, what Zeratu's doing here is the, uh, the most potentially interesting thing. Uh, is that a TML? Yeah, TML. Attacking the air grid here. About to take out this T3P giant. However, it is now being uh, T3 point defense crept. Maybe they should be attacking that instead. Oh, well, they've got their T1 line going into it. And while the, uh, the point defense is distracted with the shield... The land could do so much. Oh, but now Broadsword's coming out. Polak Salter really does not want to mess with this any longer. Uh, what's Zorotu's Khan going to build? Uh, flak to counter the bombers and the gunships. Nice TML there. 
takes out most of the build power in this area, but the uh, the stealth shield, the stealth field, is really making it harder for Zeratu to see what's going on there. Um, though it is kind of just on the edge, edge of vision range. But yeah, the um, the the missed targeted PD here is just letting itself be destroyed by a T1 RT. That's amazing. But uh, possibly that's because Lex Alta is focusing more on what's going on here. This this navy huge fleet it's cleared out all of this north peninsula here it's cleared out a lot of the mainland now uh yeah zaratu has nothing to go back to on their home side of the map so definitely a bit of a base trade going on um carla's come out to deal with this in person uh with a few t2 assault bots but uh really i, I think zaratu needs to be getting up higher tech factories the t1 spam is just not going to get you so far where when the, the defending players have got t2 and t3 engineers walking around building shields point defense and, and now a whole line of tech missile defense those tactics that worked and were hugely surprising at the start are not going to work any longer but also zoratu's economy they're trying to power all this off seven mass now that they've lost their home base they're, um, they're going for the reclaim, but their, their T1 NGs are just getting wiped out now by the counterattack. And you've got to wonder, has this attack lost its momentum? More T3... Sorry for pan there. More T3 point defense going up now under the shields. Um, this base is, is on lockdown. Nothing can get out of here past this T3 point defense. T2 tanks coming in on this side, and there's a lot of point defense to stop them, but there's a, a seemingly endless line of units, and even there's drops coming back. Uh, Do du has realized that they've won in this side of the map. They don't need to keep ferrying units over here. They've got proxy fact. Well, they've got our proxy fact. They're building up a second one. And that looked like Zeratu's Kong going there. So it was a very brave attempt and it, it really did get a lot of value. It, it took a lot of APM away from the North team. And um, yeah, also like super high variance play. It could have achieved so much, could have got a comp snipe maybe. But uh, ultimately you just can't do that much without eco. And they, they, they just couldn't keep up the momentum there on uh, what did I say before? 8 mass? Yeah. You, you can't be running a bunch of T3 land off 8 mass. And so now an army of engineers has come back in to get the reclaim and to recap these mass points. And so Team 1 here, still on, or now on, about a 300 mass difference and uh, 8k of energy, or power rather. So... The South team really needs to pull something out of the bag here, or it's just going to be a slow march of the not being able to do anything near the water. Um, Carl's put up a load of proxy facts on this side of the water. Again, just trying to win with T1 spam. Uh, interesting. There's more T1 drops coming in. But again, the, the south side still mainly going air from Raider, and I don't really know what Mambo is doing now, but um, other than dancing, um, then, oh yeah, they've teched up a land T2, and they're going for T3 land now, and, and I think they really need to do that. But they can, they can only build stuff at the back here. Any, anything further forward than than the front of Mambo's base is just coming in a constant withering fire from the, the naval standoff weapons. And they really have nothing to fight back. And now we see Deuce finally got, well, a huge line of factories coming from here. Mainly T1, but I do see some two, T2 units mixed in. And 
Yeah, there's uh, a line of shields coming at the front, and really, they, they just have this unstoppable wall now. Streaming T1 units into it, spaghetti fashion, is, is not going to stop this. Um, T1 bombers are not going to stop this, not when it's under cover of ASF. Yeah, even do saying minute 35 and T1 wars. And boom, finally Mambo's dancing days are over. Uh, some, uh, some strats there, speeding away from the scene of the crime, tells us what was responsible for that ejection. And so now it's Raider fighting alone against this onslaught and it's really difficult to see how they pull this back. Uh, now more than 400 mass behind. Just waves and waves of uh, T2 land coming at them when they, they only have T1 land. They have T3 air factories but they can't afford to run them. They're putting out these T1 bombers to just get instantly shot down by all of the flak and all of the ASFs. And now finally, the blue army has caught up with the calm. Are we gonna see our last exit from this game? They're not focusing the calm. They're here to wreak havoc. They're here to destroy the air grid. But they don't need to destroy the air grid. It's not doing anything of value anyway. Do could end this right now. But nothing is touching the calm. It's walking around through the middle of the fist fight. Ah, but the bombers come in. The uh, the strat snipe was the way to finish that, and they came in and won past the commander there. So amazing match here. It's really amazing for how long the T1 landsbound just continued to be poured in and in and in especially in the face of the the, sh the ship bombardments and the t3 air um really interesting Nerexus map even setting aside the slightly nude shape of the lake there i for one hate playing on these the, these uh, very one-sided maps but they do lead to these exciting land grabs and you know huge matches so Thank you for watching. Uh, congratulations to Team North there. And uh, commiserations, well played, Team South. I'll see you again for the next one. I've been Tufty Indigo. This has been Forged Lines Forever. Goodbye.